Of course, we are very sober, we are very reflective, we are still mourning our loss and those that the enemies took their lives on Sunday. They were not armed, we were not protesting, albeit that protest is not a crime. There was no form of agitation, but the enemies decided to kill your children. And it is unfortunate that some individuals, some ethnicities in the damnable theological republic do not understand the game plan of the enemy. That is why we are always grateful to Almighty God in heaven. For the wonderful gift of revelation, discernment, knowledge and reasoning that he has given to us. This very generation of Biafrans. It doesn't matter what we encounter, what we are going to encounter, ultimately victory is ours. I want our people to understand is that victory is ours. Nobody can take that away from us. Victory is ultimate. Are we going to suffer? Yes. Are they going to kill us? Of course, they will. Are we going to kill them? Yes, we will. But eventually, we are going to win. We always win. From nothing, look at where we are today by the grace of Almighty God in heaven. Not due to anything that we have done or capable of doing. From nothing. This very movement rose from nothing to be the force that it is today all around the world. Thanks to the grace of God Almighty in heaven, we must remain very grateful and give him every glory and adoration, every exaltation, every honor and every glory belongs to God and not to man. We are only here doing the bidding of heaven that the will of God Almighty may be done in our lives on this very earth as it is in heaven. Our enemies must understand that we are ready for them. No death will go unpunished. And very, very soon, no harassment will go unpunished. I have placed the world on notice that we are not going to tolerate all this garbage again because we are despised for no reason. We are hated by people that we have served slavishly for centuries. Those that gave us the Bible, those that gave us Christianity, they turned around and are today colluding with Islam to destroy us. Colluding with Islam to destroy us. They don't want us to live. I have said it in secret after in the open. Britain do not want us to live to survive as a race. They want to exterminate us. And they are using Fulani Janjawi to do it. But they will never succeed. That we assure them. The order that I've given stands and it will not be rescinded until Biafra is free. By virtue of what they did on Sunday, we are never ever going to stop until Biafra is completely restored, its full sovereignty restored. We are going to live like free people the way we were before Britain came. Britain is not God. They are not. Admittedly, they are a very progressive, conscientious nation. But unfortunately, they have evil people within them. They are the ones orchestrating this Islamization agenda. They are the ones driving forward this Fulanization, this Wahhabism, this very dangerous jihad. It is them. They are closet Muslims. They are. They want to overrun our land. And we are going to prove to them that God in heaven is with us. For everybody we lose, we'll kill hundreds of them. And as I've said before, their bodies they will not see. People say I should try and I shouldn't sound violent. I said to hell with all of you. They are killing us. Every blessed day they are killing, they are arresting, they are molesting 
full of things they can use their terrorism the way same way they defeated Hausa people and conquered them the same way they crushed the Nupe people the same way they took part of Yoruba land in Kwara State and destroyed them the same way they took over Bagi, the same way they took over Jugu, the same way they destroyed everywhere all the way to northern Egala. They think they can do something to us. I want to prove to them that God, the same God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the same God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the same God of Ari is with us. This very generation, we have gone back to who we are, and they cannot defeat us. It doesn't matter how many that come, they will fall on the right, they will fall on the left. And we march on steadily into victory. There is nothing they can do about it. Absolutely nothing. It doesn't matter how much. They, as I told them, I published on my page before I came live on air. Our IPOB committee radio app is listened to in 154 countries. That never happened between 67 and 70. Never. People don't understand the power of media. They don't know how potent media is. Our minds have been conditioned over the decades. We they have fine-tuned our brains over the decade to reason as foolishly as we are doing today. That is why the Janjaweed will have the temerity to come into our land and build their settlements in our forest. When you challenge them, they kill you. In broad daylight, they will come. The army will be firing at people in broad daylight and killing them, and the whole world keeps quiet. Because we have been conditioned to reason that way. But not any longer. Because this very broadcast tonight is being listened to all over the world. I said all over the world. Minimum on our app, 154 countries you can capture. That is only on IPOB community radio. Not the rest of the platforms. That tells you our reach. Our formidability. Or should I even say preponderance. It doesn't matter how our enemies disguise themselves. They can issue as much notice as they like. They are Janjawi. They will always misbehave because they are very foolish. They think because Britain gave them the zoo, Nigeria, they can do whatever they like. They can come out and kill, pillage, rape, and dismember people as at will. And nobody will ask them any questions because Britain gave them Nigeria to do as they please. But they are mistaken. People must understand where we are the way we are. For 50 years, we were very quiet. 50 whole years after the war, we kept quiet, hoping and thinking that things will change, that the world will understand our plight, that they will come around you know, to the understanding that, oh, these are gentle people. They are peace-loving people. Let us try and redress all the ills and the wrongs that we've done to them. Nobody said anything for 50 years. Instead, they kept... They kept subjugating us. They kept for 50, they kept oppressing us for half a century. For half a century, they continued. They did not stop they, to repress and oppress to the point whereby, very blatantly in the open, they are doing things and saying to everybody, What can you do? That somebody who was, who they claim was elected into office, died in office. That is the height of impunity. And that is why they are moving and pushing this agenda of Islamization and Janjawidism. That because, because the death of Buhari emboldened them. Because Buhari died in office, they can get any idiot and put a mask on his face. Because of that, and all of you swallowed it, that is why that they have the guts and the temerity to be doing what they are doing. They frightened all of you into submission. Luckily for them, they have traitors who are within Right across the south, even the middle, but they have traitors, well paid and well financed. And they gave birth to rubbish. And we are seeing them today, and I can assure you they can never go. I swear to God in heaven, they can go free. And they know it. Ask the zoo, they will tell you what they're encountering. Even tonight, we will keep hunting. Non stop. Non stop until Bia I said non stop until Biafra is restored. I said non stop. Non stop. And they know it. The order has been given. It can never, ever, ever be taken back. Now they will understand how serious we are. The world will now know how serious we are. That we've been very... 
patiently we've been waiting for over 50 years to recognize the injustice but instead they are piling more injustice on top of injustice and you want us to keep quiet you have to be dreaming you must be dreaming i assure you we must brace ourselves for what is to come they are moving about all over the place if you are vulnerable they will take you and they will kill you that is the way the Fulanese behave because they are terrorists by nature that is why they have six terror groups all of, only them six terrorist groups only full and formed six terror groups to to terrorize all of you to kill you and to make you submissive to their way of life and it's not going to happen not in biafra land they can take anywhere else but not biafra land that is why for those of you who may be wondering why things are the way they are they are the way they are because the zoo is evil the world knows the zoo is evil but because of the apathetic nature of a black man because of the limited reasoning capacity of a black man because a black man is wayward in his analytical mind so to speak that is why things are the way they are that is why things are the way they are with us some of you are in for a shock some of you are in for a shock because you some of you you see as Obasan just said when you see what you're not supposed to see and fail to do what you're supposed to do you will live with the consequences but because we are black people we do not understand the gravity of that very comment he was speaking to us in a in proverb or should i say in adage nobody was very few people could discern what the man was saying now listen carefully please governor matawale enforces immediate use of islamic calendar in zamfara schools are you listening islamic calendar in a secular country in a place where you pledge allegiance to the state they are in not even introducing they are forcing islamic calendar on the people of zamfara which goes to show that we are not the same people we are not one country and can never be we are different these are the things that ordinary that that ordinary a black person a black man or woman that went to school ordinary primary school ought to be able to understand but they do not know ask yourself this question why would a governor of a state in a so-called secular country created by a christian country mind you britain so to speak why would they have the effrontery to tell you that in their schools so it doesn't matter who's in that school if you're a christian if you're if you're if you practice judaism if you're a traditionalist it doesn't matter where you belong once you're in zamfara state you now have to operate on that islamic calendar and i want to tell you something for some of you who are so stupid as to dismiss it i want you to understand the implications of this very thing that they have done and why we are fighting this good fight to make sure that we are free some of you are daft until they slice off your neck as i said before i studied the history of slavery when i was studying the history of slavery i wasn't interested in who took who from where how they were crying how they were complaining i was trying to interrogate the reason why we did not fight back that only 5,000 Europeans can come to Africa and take away nearly 20 million people. I was trying to understand it. I was asking God, did you create them differently? How is it that when we saw these people, we were so frozen that they had to take 20 million of us and we became slaves for offering free labor for 250 years any day you sit down and think about the implications of slavery and the role that fellow black people played in the enslavement of their own kind their own children that day you will begin to reason like us
That day you would reason like us. Ask yourself this question. Why was it possible that only 5,000 Europeans, they came to West Africa, they emptied West Africa, and not only that, they now turned around to tell us who should be in the same country with us. If that is not owning somebody, I don't know what I say. In fact, the creation of states in Africa like Nigeria is, is confirmation that a black man is inferior to a white man. Take it anywhere. Because you cannot go. You can never ever go to Europe and do the same thing. You can't. They will kill you there. Look at slavery and why slavery became possible. Then you look at the suffering of black people, you understand why the zoo is the way it is. You will understand why a minority group, an ethnic group that is in the minority, they are not indigenous to Nigeria. They are not. They came from somewhere else. They are not, they, they are not the original owners of the land. Ask yourself, how is it that people who are not the least educated, they move cattle from place to place. By moving cattle from place to place, they are able to conquer those with PhD. Ask yourself that question. That way, you will understand the way that a black man reasons in that part of the world. How is it possible that people that came from Futajalon, or moving only cattle, were able to overrun advanced civilizations? Because by the time the Fulanese came to take, to take Hausa land from them, and renamed, renamed Gobert to Sokoto, for how was that civilization was centuries ahead of every other in West Africa? Great empires were built. The Songhai, the Krenemporon, great empires were built. Ask yourself, how is it possible that people that built empires, people that were manufacturing guns nearly 300 years ago, how was it possible that they were defeated by people who were driving cattle in Achinama? Ask yourself that question. That day you will know how foolish a black man is, especially those from West Africa. How other people were there in the Fulanese came with their ordinary cattle? They proceeded to go and create traitors, a fulefus within Hausa people. The a fulefus, what a fulefus does is like a left jab in boxing. You keep jabbing somebody, jabbing somebody, preparing them for the correct, you know, um, 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 uh, knockout blow. That's what they did. So the work of a sabotua is to soften the ground for the, for the Janjaweed to come in. They did it to house our people with perfection. They succeeded. They succeeded without any issue. You know what they did again? They now convinced Hauser by saying we are full and a Hauser. They spoke Hauser language. They convinced the foolish Hauser people to now join them in their campaign to conquer others. And that was what happened. They are still doing it till today. And the IPOB is saying no. We won't allow it to happen. They are very, very clever. They recruit, support. they give you, they come to those of you, those of you with long throats, those of you who are avaricious, so to speak. People being ruled by the demon of money, money making. They come to you. They say, do you want power? Do you want wealth? The same thing that Lucifer can offer anybody. You want power and you want wealth? Yes. Now betray your people. Give them to me to kill. That's what they do. And these are fools. You see them, you think they are normal. You think their brains are correct. You see them, they'll be, be doing the work. What they are doing is to soften your resolve. They finally used this trick on the houses and it worked. They went all the way to Europe, I took a lot in from them. It worked. They always look for a fool. They always look for traitors within. They plant them. They make them governors. They make them senators. All they, their job is to make sure that the aims and objectives of the Janjaweed is accomplished. Now you understand it, don't you? Now you understand the way they operate, you understand the way they work, you understand the way their mind operates. That is full and a ginger weed for you. That is the way they are. And in this time and age is no different. It is not going to be any different. We are therefore warning our people. If you are a Biafran, you are in DSS, you are in the army or you are in the police, and they send you to go and attack us somewhere, 
and you foolishly come because you're one of those you're one of the idiots they are using and you think because you're a friend you can be at the front to go and kill your people i can assure you you will die here's an assurance you are going to die any forget all these things i'm driving around in the afternoon driving through market squares and going to my village and probability i say come out at night and do the same thing that thing you're doing during the day is rubbish come out at, if your power if you feel your army your police you have power and you have might come in the night and do the same thing and see what will happen to you they think they are clever but we are more clever than they are we are far infinitely more clever than they will ever be today tomorrow and forever we are warning them and they must understand it in zamfara schools they are operating islamic calendar in a secular country and mm. some of you all interested is to who is going to rig election for us he is the son of my village and and sometimes i i don't want to speak against the spirit but i i do ask god why did you put me amongst these people who cannot reason very well uh, of all the places in the world I could come to as a human being, you put me within, surrounded by people who cannot reason, by ethnic groups who are being obliterated, they don't know it. People who are dying, they don't know that their death is being caused by their, by their should I say, by them belonging to this contraption that the British created. It doesn't, you don't have to be Einstein to understand that. You don't have to be. If, if you tell me how you can be in a country anywhere in the world and uh, one day a governor of um, a state wakes up and says, oh, from today, you're going to operate on the Christian calendar. Would that happen in the USA? Would that happen in the US? Or anywhere else that people, that people are civilized? Will that ever happen? Will it happen in South Africa? Even ordinary uh, Ghana. Will it happen in Ghana? The answer is no. Because you people, you don't reason. For, all you're interested in is, is contract. How do I make money? You forget that these, these people, they operate like the devil. They are giving you something they know you want because they want your life and they will take it from you. You don't know that? Zamfara State Governor Nebubelo Mohammed uh, Matawale has ordered the immediate use of Islamic calendars in primary, secondary, and the universities across the state. Universities as well. Universities across the state. And you're telling me you're in one Nigeria. You're in one Nigeria. You keep lying to yourselves. All of you know that the zoo is unworkable. You know that because of your avaricious nature, because you want money, because you're poor, because you're desperate, you will do anything for money, you will do anything to go and build us in your village. Because of that, you sell your soul and your conscience you are working for fulani you don't know it as bbc Ibo is bbc Ibo is working for fulani only an idiot cannot see it i warned you four years ago i told you that people asked us oh why do you do what you do we said we are always on the offensive because one day bbc will come any of you who can remember i told you that there will come a time when bbc will come and that time has come and they have revealed themselves who they are. You, unless you are intelligent, you won't know that BBC was working for full and you can never tell unless you have brain. People travel to overseas. They say, let's go. I got admission to go to civil aviation institute in, in Florida to go and become a pilot. To go and become a pilot. My father said no because then... He was like he was very very much okay he said no that the, the fees are so are too cheap somebody said to my father he only those who who plan to travel abroad are those who are not educated or who those who couldn't pass jam and work i want to tell you something i wanted to go to us i i had my admission to go and start to to, to start to become a pilot one day something occurred to me and I told her, I said to my father, I'm no longer going. Since you want me to prove to you how intelligent I am, I'm going to go to the best university you have around, which is UNN, Nsuka. And I did, I entered Nsuka. And after a while, I said to my father, I now want to go to Britain. My father said, why do you want to go to, to England? I said, because that is where our problem started from. I want to understand how these people, a few of them, they were not, they were not even up to 50. They came down, they went to Ghana. They recruited black people from Ghana to come and help them conquer their fellow black people in Badagri. I said to my father, I want to go there to understand the way they reason. That was why I went to England to go and study. 
And today we know. It takes, you have to be a fool not to understand what BBC is doing. You have to be a complete idiot not to know their game plan. One day they'll bring somebody like uh, Abaribe. We, we, somebody they, they know we all respect, revere, and love very much. And another day they'll, they'll, they'll go and bring one a full for working for Fulani. That is what they do. You don't know them, that is what they do. It is their job. It takes people who can reason to understand this. You, you have your senses has to be. You have to be switched on for you to know their game plan. That their plan is to overrun us. Their plan, the plan of BBC Ibo, and all the rest of them is to help, as they did during the war, as they did between sixty-seven and seventy, is to help them to overrun us, as they did. The reason why the stop willing commission was to weaken us, to divide us, to create Niger Delta. You, you, you go back in history, you will see their, their, their pattern of divide and rule and destruction. And then you will understand it very well. But we are saying this to them today that we are better dead than alive. Instead of us to remain in the zoo called Nigeria, they better kill all of us. They have to kill all of us because we can never belong to Nigeria. It is impossible. We can never do it. We have started and there is no going back. There is no going back. Not today, not tomorrow. The people talk about, you know, our people, they don't have access to proper education. That is the problem that an average Nigerian has. They have no proper access to decent qualitative education. They will understand it. For them to understand what we are doing, go and read the history of freedom fighting and of liberation movement all over the world. Go and study it from top to bottom. They always start with the ragtag army. From Chairman Mao to, uh, should I say, from, 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 from Washington to Chairman Mao to Fidel Castro to all of them. They always start that way. But when this glory and victory comes, then we can sit back and rewrite history, if we choose to do. In the zoo called Nigeria, a governor came out single-handedly, introduced Islamic rule in, in Zamfara. In a so-called secular country. And an idiot is standing up somewhere and talking about Nigeria. Let us work together for Nigeria. I don't understand the planet. These are the people planted by the ginger weed. These are the same people. Their type was the reason why Hausa land fell. Their type was the reason why Wagi fell. Their type was the reason why um, TV fell. Their type is the reason why Jukun. All of these places collapsed. To cattle headers in the national man. Cattle rarers. Stark illiterates. Go and look at our news during the war. If you want to know how evil BBC is, go and look at our news during the war. Analyze BBC coverage of Biafran war. You will shed tears. You will know they are evil. They were the ones that came and said, they were, oh, uh, 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 one million people died of starvation. They never gave the accurate figures of those that died during the war. As to be near, over five million people died. As a result of British wickedness, Britain said there should be no supply of arms to either side. Don't, give, don't sell arms to Biafra, don't sell arms to Nigeria. But Britain went behind our back, went to Russia, negotiated with Russia so that Russia can supply arms to Nigeria. Are you aware of that? Look at the map of Nigeria. Have you ever seen, if you bring any country in the world and you want to do north, south, east, and west, you, you divide it equally? Do you know that Britain helped Fulani to the extent whereby into our own land today, there are three local governments in Benue. Three local governments in Benue, they are Igbo people. Konk Igbo, they speak Igbo language, but today they are part of Fulani North. Are you aware of that? This is, people say, oh, but, uh, you know, when they used to accuse us of um, being disrespectful to elders, and I asked them, you are an elder, you claim you have PhD, you studied in Oxford, Cambridge, everywhere else. How come you allowed three local governments from your land to be given to Janjaweed for free in Benue? Nobody can answer that question till today. That was what we said, they, know, they don't know what they're doing. They don't love our people. They claim they do, but they don't. 
The reason why they do what they do is just to get money from Janjaweed to build upstairs, to answer minister, to answer this honorable and excellency. That is all. The love of the people is not in their heart. They never loved our people. If I lived in their time, do you think I will allow our land to be balkanized? Do you think I will allow any stupid commission to draw boundary? What they do is that when they come to your, your state, as they have now done to Mahi, they say, make us, make a Boeing state, Islamic state, we'll give you presidency. And the idiot is busy making it an Islamic state. Very busy, trying all he can to make it. He made an announcement today that only if we see any children uh, driving cattle in a Boeing state, you, you will be arrested. How about the adults with AK-47? This is, how they, this is how they get into our people. And I expect somebody as learned, a man that I used to respect, so people should be learned enough to understand when their land is under danger of occupation. Because the only thing that will stop the full and danger with is Atlantic Ocean. And now, of course, IPOB. And now IPOB, and they know it very well. Are we, you know, some idiots come and they write, uh, show us arms. Show us the army. If you want to know if we have anything or not, ask the, ask the ZU army and DSS. Ask them how they're getting it. Then they're the ones to tell you, not me. Because anything I, I, I say live on air uh, uh, will be used against me. Uh, and of course, you know that. Ask them why they're doing their gra, gra show in the afternoon, not at night. Would forget all that nonsense, siren in the afternoon, the making noise. Come out at night. And we'll show you who we are. Mad people everywhere. A governor has made you Zam. So if your child is in Zamfara, let's say they transfer you to Zamfara. All of a sudden, your child will now start um, operating under Islamic calendar. And the fools that some of you are, you come out and say, oh, one Nigeria. We Nigeria. Let's work for Nigeria. And I, 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 anyway, the same way that some of your ancestors said, uh, don't stop slavery. Because you are making money out of it. Never you dare stop slavery. It doesn't surprise me. It doesn't surprise me a black man and a black mind is self-destructive. Self-destructive. And I'm very, very happy that Pastor Chris or Yakilomi at last have, that is to tell you the depth and the importance of our broadcast. When we make our broadcast, people sometimes, they say, oh, it's too outlandish, too outrageous. How can... But when you go back and you sit down and you reason, you come to the same conclusion that we have come to. Because we see things that ordinary human beings cannot see. Way before they see it. Pastor Chris Oyakilomi, is he not saying the same thing that I've been saying all this while? He listened to our broadcast, he went and did his research, he found out it's the truth. And very few black people can do that. Very few black people can come out and say, yes, what that, those people are saying is the truth. And I'll follow them. Somebody left their land, came and named you black, which means everything ugly and black under the sun. And I saw some, I read somebody, I read a comment, somebody challenging Pastor Chris Oyakilomi, saying, you don't say that, I'm black. You know, you know, when you see a baboon, when you see a black monkey, when you see a monkey, an African that is so backward in his reasoning, you wonder, did God waste his time creating such an, an evil person? Did you name yourself black? A white man named you black. Why did they name you black? Because the, they say you, you, you don't like light. You, you are backwards. You are evil. There is no light where you are. And you are fighting. I say, oh, I'm black. Don't say that I'm black. Because over the years, you have been conditioned to reason like the idiot you are. That is why, despite all your... You, ask yourself this question. I started by, when I said, when I left UNN and went back home and I said to my father, I'm a, you must send me to England. My father said, why? I said, how can I be in a university? In a university. Reading geography. I don't know what an Ignos rock looks like. I, for one day, I never went for a field trip. Everything is theory, on paper, in class, telling you, showing you diagrams. I said to my father, what sort of nonsense is that? The university is meant to be a place where you will go to and you will see everything, you will learn everything, they radicalize you, you think like you, you question everything. Here at the university, you see people needing, oh, sir, they are answering professor, sir, 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 sir. I went to a university, my, my supervising professor was Dr. James Chiriakandat. I used to call him James. 
If you call him doctor, you can tell him, no, no, don't call me doctor. Call me James. That's how close we were. My supervisor of my project. I can never forget. This is where they teach you to reason, to learn. The most important thing the white man never taught African people is how to reason and to reason critically. How to reason. Yeah, I, I was shocked when I saw Pastor Chris's video. I was, I was flabbergasted. I said, what? Yes, exactly what I had lectured on Radio Biafra. From the, he did his own research. He even brought out other points that I never knew concerning this name of black that they gave to you and you're answering with pride. Typical. Typical. Black people. And now in Zamfara is Islamic State. Now if, if a governor, let's say for instance, let's say for instance one governor, let's say we can now, we have to come out to say every school in River State will now operate under a Christian calendar. <laughs> you, they will call for, for his head immediately. But they are doing it in the north. And nobody is talking. In other words, the zoo has been divided already. You are operating a multi-system sham, not even democracy. That's what you have. And only IPOB has the mind, the presence of mind to challenge and to bring your stupidity before your eyes so you can see properly. Do you, do you know why we are different? You know sometimes, they, not some, all the time, we lament when... Uh, you know, all these forces of darkness converge against us. But we don't stop there. We know that if we rely on zoo newspapers to carry our news, we'll be like, um, we'll be dead like, 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 like Masob is. Or should I say Bim? Not Masob, Bim. They relied on people to carry their news for them. I want you to understand the reason why we preach regularly on the inconsistent. After all, you go, the same Bible that you have, go and bring out your Bible. Every Sunday before you were born, your ancestors were, I wouldn't say ancestors, your great grandfathers were going to church with the same Bible. Pastors have been preaching from the same Bible every Sunday, and then after about 20 years ago, every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, the same Bible, they preach it every blessed week. You still go to church, you're not tired. Are you tired? Because they want you to learn. When you go to school, you start from kindergarten, maybe you do it for about two years, from the age of four to the age of six. And then from the age of six to the age of 12, you are in, you are in, um, in um, primary school. From the age of 12 to the age of 18, O-levels and A-levels. You're still learning. Until you're in your mid-twenties, you're investing, you are still learning. For, two, for nearly 20-something years, you're learning. But somebody wants to listen to Radio Biafra for two, three days, and then tell you, oh, please, give us arms, let's go to war. So we can build another useless black African country, then you're insane. That is why we educate you, that's why we lecture you, that is why we tutor you, that is why we enlighten you, so that your brains can be open so you can understand. The people say, oh, you, he, he insults people. Why wouldn't I insult you if you're foolish? Why wouldn't I insult you if you are hopeless? I ask. If you're foolish, of course, you'll be insulted. Do you think we are people who are going to sugarcoat what we say so you feel better? So you feel better? I want to know what is happening. They said the, the app goes and comes back. I don't know what it's supposed to mean. I have no idea what that's supposed to mean, that it goes and comes back. I want to know precisely what is happening. Say it goes and it comes. I don't know what is happening. I have no idea. But I, from here, all our systems are go. It is absolutely fine. You refresh your system, you turn off your phone, perhaps, and, and reboot your phone. It should be okay. I am not getting any complaints. I am not getting any other complaints, so I believe that the app is okay. We are, which is IPOB Community Radio. Now, to tell you how clever Fulani people are, they think that, you know, it's Britain that is giving them all the brain. They think they are clever. They think they are very smart. What they want to do is to subdue everybody. So that when, what they, what they do is that the army and the police is the advance party of the Janjaweed, Boko Haram. The advance party of ISIS in West Africa. That is what they do. The police and the army you see every day is to soften you up. The real army of darkness is coming behind them. It's coming behind them. Remember Joss. Some of you don't know the history of Joss. Go and look, read, study Joss very well. It took them many years to subdue Joss. I think it's the Biron people. They have been subdued. 
now they are going to get an MA in Joss. That is the way they work. They spend years, Fulani is very patient, they spend years putting pressure on you, direct and indirect pressure. In the meantime, they'll be leading election. They'll be influencing who is your PG, who is um, who will um, emerge your social cultural leader, who is your governor, who is your senator. At a, at a particular time, every of your senator, every governor, as they have done now, in the whole of Biafra land, with the exception of Wika, Every governor in your land, and of course, Udom Emmanuel, who is do, doing very well in Akwaibum, with the exception of those people, every other person is in their pocket. If you thought they said we'll remove you, and you start panicking, and in, for you to stay in power, remain relevant to be answering Excellency and be controlling billions of naira, worthless naira, you do anything they ask you to do. Anything. That is why people are killed. Innocent people are killed. None of the governors ever rose up to condemn what happened. They cannot speak. That tells you who their master is. But Ihe Chirika was bombing Boko Haram, a certified terrorist group, killing, bombing, and maiming people all over the place in the north. Buhari came out and said an attack against Boko Haram is an attack against the north. Very, very open. They voted for him. And he won. But look at the type of politicians you have. With the exception of Abaribe, look at the people you have. They killed their own children in front of their eyes. People that committed no crime. But because how can you promise seven governors uh, uh, the president at the same time? And they all know they've been promised the same thing, all of them together. And they are now working as much as possible to outdo each other in terms of how they sabotage their own people. And these are the people you want us to respect. You want us to respect people that their own people are being killed and they, are, and they kept quiet. You want us to respect them. Now you know. If you want to know the difference between a man and a weasel, if you want to know an Abuja-sponsored politician, go and look at all, all of them. It was only Abaribe that spoke. Only Abaribe that, that said something sensible. Look, at, have they said anything? And these are the people you want us to vote for to become the You want us to vote for these people who couldn't utter a word when the people were being killed. These are the people you want us to make president. That time, they will tell them, if you want to go for a second time, go and kill all of your youth. Go and kill IPOB. They will come and they will do it. You see this um, slaughter of IPOB family members in Enugu? is a two-edged sword. Now, I want you to tell me who amongst all the idiots doubting they want to represent, who amongst them is qualified if you cannot speak up against injustice against your own people? You want to be president? Come now, let us see. Who wants to be president? By then, anyway, Biafra will stand on his own. They are wasting their time. No wonder they're sabotaging it. Somebody, because of your presidential ambition, you don't want Biafra to come. You don't want your people to be free. You want us to be suffering. All because you and your family, you want to answer head of state of Nigeria. Because of that, we must suffer. Because of that, we must continue to endure full and agenda Buddhism. Because of one man's ambition to be president. And in this case, you I say seven men. Because they go about, you know, distributing like a confetti, flying out all over the place. Oh, you want to be president of Nigeria? Uh, it's your turn. Ibo man, it's your turn. Yes. Because of that, you'll be president. Yes. But now, give us a Mieti Allah settlement in your village. And they, they willingly they give. They say, oh, that's a way to do it. Oh, my case here, man. You need to be strategic. Strategize what? Are you more intelligent than Azikiwe? Than Azikiwe? Are you more intelligent than Azikiwe? They outmaneuvered him. As, he, as learned, as wise as Azikiwe was, they managed to outmaneuver him. Talking of a wretched idiot with a bot degree from somewhere. That forgot his boxer shots in the north. As somebody said, well, perhaps uh, when they are a bit normal, when their backside is a bit normal, they, they talk sense. Once their backside has been opened up in, in, in Katsina and in Sokoto, they start talking rubbish. Mad people everywhere. Mad people everywhere. Of course, it will not surprise me of, uh, at all, at all. If our app is, is under attack, we expect it from them. But in the end, we always prevail. We always prevail. People are listening and they're saying it is fine, that it's okay. That's what I'm hearing. So anybody writing about it is wasting their time, of course. 
that, that is Sharia coming, not even Sharia, Islam is coming your way. You see their trick and you see their game. You all see it, but you keep quiet. When IPOB says, oh, go and kill them, and some of you are jumping up and down. You think we will forgive and forget? You've got to be joking. You've got to be dreaming. Because we can never, ever forgive and forget. It is impossible. Absolutely impossible. You must understand that. You must understand that. You must. That's what they're doing. There is security alert in our place, please. In Okon, Ako, Ohafia, in Ohafia LGA. In Ohafia LGA. Uh, yesterday and today, there was a Toyota Camry car with a tinted glass escorted by two army military vans loaded with armed Fulani soldiers patrolling the village of Okon, Ako. Every morning around 10 o'clock, taking live video and pictures of the environment as they, as they patrol on their convoy. I want our people to know, all of you in Ohafia, to take note of these very people who are perambulating. We also understand that some Ifulefu is in Enugu may be responsible going door to door and pointing at homes where people are living. Our people must be very, very careful. They will only come in the afternoon. They cannot come at night because if they come at night, they know they, they will never go. They know they can never, ever go. They understand that very, very well. That is why they are doing all they can to make sure they arrest many people in the afternoon. These are murderers and killers. That is why they are terrorists. Anybody you see in army or police uniform is a terrorist. I am warning you now, they are all terrorists and they must be treated like terrorists. The merchants of terror that they are, that is the treatment that they deserve and we will not stop in our campaign until the world recognizes that Nigerian army and police are terrorists in uniform. Even worse. Anybody doubting you, go and show them the video of the carnage. Where they, because they specialize in killing unarmed civilians. That's what they do. Boko Haram, they run away. They go and look for Chad. They beg Cameroon. They beg Niger. Please come and help us. America, give us a helicopter. These are, come and help us. When it comes to unarmed civilians, you see them, they are boasting and jumping all over the place. Because that is Fulani's motto. The way they operate, they intimidate, they subdue, they terrorize, and they take over your land. That's what they do. But not in Biafra land, they cannot do that. And they know that very, very well. They know that very, very well. The governor of Enugu state, where the massacre of innocent people happened, has been told, he's been told by Abaribe, Senator Abaribe, the only man left standing. The only man left standing. The rest are, are lily livered cowards who should have no business with politics. How do I? It's, it's our turn. Our presidency, rubbish, spreading their money everywhere, thinking they're going to deceive us again. You are dreaming. All of you are dreaming. It doesn't matter. You take your stupid presidency and put it where the sun doesn't shine. You are all dreaming. If they can kill your people, you cannot speak. You want to come and contest for praise. Let, let, let us see where you are going to go and, and, and do the campaign. Let us see where you do the campaign. Mad people everywhere. Our Baribe have told um, any good state governor to institute a panel of inquiry. If they are going to do it, we do not know. Nobody has an idea, but they have been told to try and institute a panel of inquiry to look into what happened. He was the only man that spoke. Look at the rest of them. Senator this, Senator that. I want to contest for Anambra. I want to contest for him. I want to look at all of them. They say they, they didn't say a word. They are afraid if we say something now, we will damage our chances. You see the way the reason. But we stood behind the Baribe. And they did all their nonsense. Abaribe returned with almost 95% of the votes. I don't know what is wrong with her. I don't, I don't know what is wrong with them. You're so frightened of Fulani Janjaweed that you cannot speak the truth because you want political office. Mad people everywhere. The Senate Manonti leader in Abaribe on Tuesday condemned the alleged killings of, of um, Igbo youth in Emene, Edugu State, by some security operatives. He said the killings of Igbo have given room to wider to wide suspicion of a sinister. Of course, there's always been a sinister motive. They compressed the economy of the East, so we have to travel abroad to look for greener pastures. If you're lucky, you get a visa. If, if not, you head to Lagos, or you head to Abuja, you head to Kaduna, you head to Zaria, you head to Sokoto, you go to Kanu, or you go to Medugri. That's what they have done, very cleverly. Now, since we have defied all their 
attempts to depopulate our land to bring in Janjaweed from across the Sahel. They have resorted to killing people. And that is what we are resisting. Everybody best said there must be, uh, and it will not cost the Enugu governor anything. He is no longer seeking for re-election. So I see no reason why he should not be able to constitute a panel of inquiry. And nobody can impeach him because if they try it, they know what to come their way. It will never, ever, ever happen. So we do not know what is happening. I do not know. I do not know. Please, very, very important that our people understand this, that the Enugu state governor has been told, go and constitute a panel of inquiry. And he must do it to find out. What, we want to prove to the world what happened. But I'm sure the Franis won't let him. We want to prove to the world what happened in Enugu. We want to let the world understand that the zoo army and police, that they are terrorists. Zoo is Nigeria. That they are terrorists. These are the things that the world must bear in mind. And that is why we must remain resolute and relentless. The time now is top of the hour. A minute past. 8 p.m. in the blessed land of Biafra, we are live and we are direct, and the whole world is listening. The whole world, our people must be very, very careful. And always video them. Always take pictures of them. Very, very important. Anytime you see, take these videos from a safe distance. Very, very important. Wherever you see them, you must take their videos. Because they have a habit of, of lying and denying the atrocities that they commit very evil they want to do all these things go to your villages now most of the forests you have fallen settlements there some of you living in any you cannot tell me you have not seen them when you travel to other places do you live in the bush we, we are in we are in in, in Oduduwa water territory we are in in Janjaweed. we are in in uh, in our land are we not can't can't our people reason do we live in the forest they come to our land they go to the they take it by force so in a few years' time, they will tell us that we must have an Emma, the Emma of our people. And because of somebody's stupidity, the same thing we are suffering today, because of Azikiwe's stupidity, see where we are today. Azikiwe wanted to be, to be Prime Minister of One Nigeria. Because of that, he sold our people, look at the mess we are in today. Look at the mess he left us with. The, the same rubbish is about to repeat itself. And our people are busy talking rubbish presidency uh, go and look at the history of colonialism those that fought to end colonial rule look at what they did to zeke if you don't have any brain go and check it very well you don't see was there and they killed him did the world uh, 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 fall to pieces the answer is no full and it took over i want our people to reason please go and reason very very well and this very evening you know you know these people <laughs> we are prepared if you are a Biafran, if you are a Biafran, or an Igbo man, woman, army or police or DSS, and they send you and you run out, you're coming. I feel you, what are you? Because they have promised you promotion, you will die. You will die. Because anybody in that uniform is seen as a Janjaweed. Once you're in that uniform and you're outside, you're seen as a Janjaweed. That is who you are to. You're a terrorist to us. For your information. For your information. Now, let me tell you precisely what they are reporting so that the world may know and bear us witness. And I want this news to be put everywhere so that the Fulefu and their parents will know. You know, most of them, their father is from, is from the north and they fathered them and they gave birth to rubbish, a lineage of nonsense. Nigerian army cautions soldiers over alleged killings of DSS operatives by IPAB members, directs them to wear mufti in public. The Nigerian army is saying, do not wear your uniform outside your barracks. We don't want you to be attacked by IPOB. Anything that happens to you is your business. Even if you're wearing mufti, we know you. Once you're a soldier, we'll find you, we'll know where you are. If you're in a public transport, you're gone. Wherever we find you, copy what I'm saying. Send it to Trump, send it to Pompeo, send it to Queen Elizabeth, send it to David Cameron, is what I'm saying. If we find you anywhere, you are a goner. You are gone for killing unarmed people. Every, uh, almost every six months, you must kill people who are unarmed, innocent people. And now you want to wear mufti and come outside? That's what the, it was reported by some reporters. 
In an internal signal dispatched to different formations unit commanders, the Nigerian Army asked all troops to be on the alert and to avoid individual movement in uniforms outside the barracks. Efunef, what does that tell you? Okoko, what does that tell you? They know. They know. Do you know we don't fight like cowards? We tell you what we are going to do before we do it. So you know. That's who we are. And we are telling them, even if you wear mufti and you have started something, you cannot finish. The police commissioner in Enugu State, the DSS director in Enugu State, the army, 82 division, you have started something you can never ever finish. How many are you people? Do you outnumber us? Even if you recruit every full and ginger weed into the army, do you outnumber Biafran people? You know you don't. No, you don't. You don't. They are, they are warning them. They are warning them not to come to wear mufti. But if we see them, we will know them. It doesn't matter if you are Igbo, you are a joy, you are you are you are you are you are uh, Ibibio or Efik. Once you are with them, you are an enemy of the people, and you will suffer for it. So if you like wear mufti, if you like we are uh, disguise yourselves as women and come out and do, you can wear weed. You, uh, that is the learning thing now in Abuja. Mask. Aisha's boyfriend, they, they have uh, four types of masks they can uh, give him to wear to deceive all of you gullible fools. You cannot deceive us. You cannot deceive us. You cannot deceive us. Publish this news, please, it's from Sarah Reporters. Uh, you're cautioning your soldiers because of us. You have said something you cannot finish. Every time we'll be on our own, you'll be coming to kill us. Every time you see people, you kill. And it's, what is wrong with you? Because you want to take over our land? You want to take over the land of Biafra. Is that what you think? Nam the Kanu is alive and you think you will take over Biafra land? In your dreams, all of you. You are all dreaming. Both you, all of you, your fellow Efulefus, the traitors who are within, you are all dreaming. And all of the fake accounts, all of the idiots you have contracted in, 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 um, in Russia to be churning out fake accounts, writing rubbish, you have all failed. Oh, you have failed. You are wasting your money. You are wasting it. Well, you have tried before to stop us. Did you succeed? You have tried. That was why you brought BBC Ibo, to see if BBC Ibo can, can confuse some idiots from questionable lineage. Have you succeeded? Have you succeeded? No. You cannot succeed. Not now, not tomorrow, not ever. Anybody who thinks that we are going to relent, you are dreaming. The more you kill us, the more formidable we become. The more, the angrier we become. And the more the level of consequence you have to bear when the time comes. When the time comes, people who are reasonable see how they speak, see how they talk. Insecurity. Buhari, of course, is the full and the government. Buhari, everybody knows that Buhari is dead. Yoruba should carry licensed guns. Ghani Adams Council. If it is a if it is um a, a Biafra now saying this, you see every manner of idiot. Every, that was that, that, the only reason why I hated our people going to the north before the war was because of the nonsense they gave birth to. Nubawasa and, uh, and Yoruba land. Rubbish. They, they gave birth to nonsense. With Biafran names. Ghani Adams, his counsel is saying that allow people to carry guns. If you say they take them, they will now call Omahi, they will call the governor. So, what are, are you there? What are you doing? Do something. Remember, you're going to be the president. Into, they know it's a lie. You know you're going to be the president of Nigeria. His Excellency, are, are you there? The head of state, commander in chief, are you there? This is an ordinary, useless, bloated governor. Are you there? Do something. The idiot will come out and issue a useless press release. Now you can see it. People are now conversing for guns to be carried in the open. To stop who? To stop Fulani. Fulani, for nearly 220 years, they have been on the march. Non-stop, until they get to Atlantic. That is their mission. But a Fulefu can never see it. A Fulefu wants money. A Fulefu wants money because they know that being a sabo pays. After the war, when we allowed people like Papa Abiyaseka to live, was the greatest mistake we ever made. Papa Abiyaseka. What they did, what Papa Abiyaseka's presence did was to embolden Sabo to us, Sabo and traitors, to embolden them, to know that there is a reward. 
because Fulani is always willing to pay. Once you come out to betray your people, Fulani will pay you very well. And that's what they're doing. And that is why they can never go scot free. God is out. They, are, they, they know now. Don't they know that? They know that dead men and women walking. They understand that very clearly. They know that very well. If the zoo army is crying, how about an ordinary wretched cockroach? How about an ordinary wretched? We are not going to stop anyway. And everybody knows that. They are saying, we want to carry arms. Yoruba is saying, allow us to carry arms. And I will tell you the reason why later on. I will tell you the reason why later Yoruba is asking to carry arms. Begging that they want to carry arms. Because our people will need to understand what these guys have in store for us. What they have in store for us. That the world may know that the Fulani have come to conquer. And Britain is aiding and abetting them. Britain is the one supporting them. Moving them and pushing them forward. Go and conquer. Go and conquer. That guarantees uh, free access to oil and gas. That is, that's why they're doing what they're doing. Don't you know that? That is why they're doing what they're doing. And they have failed and they will continue to fail. Now, Yoruba, Ganya Dams is saying, the Generalissimo of Yoruba land is saying, allow us to carry guns to defend ourselves. Because you can see Fulani with his cattle, they have AK-47. They have, you'll be asking yourself, how can somebody who is moving cattle have gone from where? Supplied by the Nigerian army. Protected by the Nigerian police. Do you understand that? Why would somebody moving cattle from place to place have AK-47? Why? Because you don't know that they are coming to conquer you until it is too late. Until it is too late. And the, let me tell you, let me tell our people one thing they don't know about the Fulani. The they, they Fulani play what I call the waiting game. They wait. They wait. Over the years, they wear you out. Once they wear out your people by planting as many traitors and saboteurs as possible, then they now strike. Unfortunately, they have not been able to penetrate Yoruba structure that much. You know our people now? <laughs> Call one of them now. Pretend you are a full animal. man. Call any politician and say, you're going to be the next president we've been thinking. Look at Edo. You saw what happened in Edo. Look at Obi and others his election. He had to run to Gambaro before Jubril. Look at Edo. Edo had to, they had to travel. Look at Bajabi Amila. That's his name. The Speaker of the House. He had to convert from Christianity to Islam. So they can make him the Speaker of the House. Look at Edo. The one say, that said his contestant under APC. He, he, he's a pastor. He had to go and convert to Islam. To win an election. You see how they control you? Do you see? He, you know, it starts as a joke. It's our turn, it's our turn. Look at the way they blackmailed and, and pressured Jonathan. He, he gave them INEC chairman. Once he gave them INEC chairman, that was the end of him. That was the end of him. Do you think Flanny would be objective in their lives? Of course not. They produce nothing, they add nothing. They contribute no value to the economy. All they do is to steal, to cheat, to lie, and to terrorize. That's all they do. That is the only thing that they do. Who doesn't know that? Who does not know that? A, you saw them, they pressured Jonathan. Jonathan foolishly gave eye neck to them. Look at where we are today. They want to do the same thing in Yoruba land. And Yoruba are saying, no, you cannot do it here. They formed Amoteku. They formed, now listen carefully to this, please. Our people don't, you know, once it comes now to the east, we all they say, hey, can't you see Amoteku? They, 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 all the state assembly, they agreed. They will never remember, you know, there's a, you know, a full of, there's a way and a full of things. They will never remember that Amoteku was formed before being ratified by the various state assemblies that you have in Oduduwa land. That was how he, that, 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 that's the history of it. Now that Amoteku is standing, and at least to an extent, helping to police and uh, keep uh, Oduduwa land safe. What have they done, the Fulani? The Fulani, they've been thinking. They, they thought that the East will go against the West. They thought Biafrans will go against um, uh, Oduduwa uh, by being against Amoteku. We came out. We were the first to support Amoteku. And we'll support it forever and ever. Now, since they couldn't divide them, they bribed some people to say, oh, this is not a um, federal government, whatever rubbish. They bribed a few Muslim Yoruba to talk rubbish. They failed. Oduduwa's too strong on Amoteku. 
the governors move very although that some of the governors are in APCO understand the difference between an Igwe Fulef and the one from Ududu Waland. That's the difference. Despite the fact that most of the of the Yoruba governors they are in APC, they still they still went ahead to form a security outfit. Understand this very well. They formed Amoteku before the state assemblies ratified it. Yes? Good. Now, ask the... Our land is under siege. Ebony. Every day we are battling in Ebony to keep Ebony safe. Ask the Efulefus you have in Ebony State. Ask them, please. Ask them, I beg of you. Why is it that you don't want to have a security outfit for the whole of the East? Ask them. And I will tell you why now. Because they have been promised presidency they will never ever see. Look at what they are, look, I want the world to understand how the Fulanese are pressuring the Yoruba people to, do, to abandon Amoteku. Look at what they're trying to do. They have tried to pressure them to abandon it. They said no. They now want to water it down. And I want to read the news for you so you understand. That is the, the way they work. When I told people that the creation of states was designed to hand power over to the Fulanese, they didn't understand it. You see creation of states and local government is the worst thing to ever happen to people. Regions are very strong. Do you know why the Fulanese don't want any region? Because that was what was contained in Aburi. Britain is against region. If you have a regional um, structure, a confederation, a regional structure, they know that the economy of the East will surpass that of the UK. They know it very well. The Britain doesn't want a shining beacon to come out of Africa. Britain does not want the world to see the ingenuity of Biafrans. They cannot do it themselves, so they're using Fulani to do it for them. And Fulani is, of course, being black, the demented people, they will do anything the white master asks them to do. So you don't know that? You don't know that they are doing the work of the devil for them? Because Britain knows that in a confederation in an Aburi-styled Nigeria, that the East will be the best performing economy in the whole of Africa. They know that our economy will challenge that of Britain. They know that very well. Don't you know that? They know that very, very well. That is why they are doing all they can to suppress, to kill, to make sure that Biafra doesn't rise up. You don't know that? Now listen. Amoteku, a regional security outfit. Now listen to this news. The presidency says the Western Nigeria Security Network, codenamed Dr. Shamoteku, will now be run in accordance with the structure defined by the Inspector General of Police, who happens to be a Fulani man. Do you understand? Now what they're going to do is to weaken Amoteku. What they're going to do is to try and get it to obey their command structure to now allow Fulani Janja with terrorists to be able to penetrate Yoruba land without Amoteku being able to do anything about it. They want to control Amoteku. Are you following? Do you see the way the, the Fulani is the reason? Do you see how forward thinking they are? They know what Amoteku portends, that it will not allow them now to take over Yoruba land beyond Kwara State. They have taken already. Now, are you following? What did they say? They said the Inspector General of Police will now control the Western uh, uh, Nigerian Security Network. Are you following? The Senior Special Assistant to the President of Media and Publicity, Garaba Shehu, said this on Channel's Television Sunrise Daily. Shehu was speaking on the approval of $13 billion by the government for community policing across the 36 states of the Federation. He said, whatever name they go by, this is according to a full name I know, full um, um, spokesman for the presidency. Uh, not president, but presidency. Whatever name they go by, Amotekun or whatever, this is what he's saying, he will not mention his bar. They have his bar police in the north. If you drink alcohol, they jail you. If you drink alcohol, they cut off your hand. If they catch you selling beer, they fine you, they flog you, they destroy all your wares. They will not tell you that they have, they have just introduced Sharia, or should I say Islamic rule, in Zamfara State. They won't tell you that they have Islamic police in the north enforcing their Sharia rules. No, he won't tell you that. No, no, never. He is Muslim, he's Fulani. They own Nigeria. He will tell you what to do. Nigeria belongs to them, and they do as they please. When he, have you ever heard him before come out to talk about um, his bar? His bar police or his bar army? No, but he will talk about other people. And now, hear him. Whatever, look at how the rivalry, 
Look at how insulting his, the language that he was using. Uh, Amotekun or whatever. Look at that. Will be streamlined and they will be run in accordance with the structure as defined by the Inspector General of Police. They will be localized. They will be owned by local communities. They will be managed by them. You know what he's saying? They will be localized means it can no longer be an Oduduwa force. It can no longer be a Yoruba defense um, arm. They want it to be handled by local government so Miyet Yala can overrun one after the other, one after the other until they conquer the whole of them. You see how, how they think their brain is full and you see their brain. Oh, you have formed Amotekun, there is no problem. But now, they, they want to weaken Amotekun structure. By weakening it, they want to make it local. Local means, uh, now you say like in our land, you say, oh, it's now under the hands of the PG, President General. They go to the idiot and say, oh, um, Mietiela wants to buy land in your village. The land is worth maybe four million, but we'll give you 20 million and allow Mietiela to be there and give us the, where is your local security network? He will show them the vigilante and Mietiela will go there and overrun them. As I posted earlier, for people who don't understand the word for any reason, some of you who pretend you don't know, why is it that IPOB family members were in a prayer meeting uh, 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 they mobilized the DSS, uh, police, air force, and army at the same time to go and kill people. Whereas when Nimbo, I posted it on my page, on my Facebook, of course, Facebook is suppressing my post, I know that very well. I posted it on my page. Go to my page, you will see it. When Nimbo, Ozo one was being attacked, I recall very clearly as I wrote today, I know that Ubuani was calling Buhari then, he was alive. Buhari never picked his call until the full and is fully finished uh, uh, killing people in 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 Ozo one eh? and they left once they left buhari answered the phone when he was alive and i want to ask any all of you that claim you are the elite you live in abuja and in lagos when you got those phone calls that Ozo one was under attack that full and heads men are in nimbo killing people and you were calling dg dss in Enugu. did he answer the phone I want anybody to come out to say that during the attack on Nimbo, that DSS was reachable or that they contacted the um, uh, Commission of Police in Enugu State. They are all fallen. None of them was reachable. Oma, uh, not Omahe, Uguane called Buhari then, he was alive in 2016. Buhari didn't take the phone. These were calls going, distress calls going to the army, the police, the DSS, and the presidency. Nobody answered the call. Until the Fulani, Fulani people finished killing, they left Bimbo, and now they came the next day. But this one was, there was no public dis disturbance, there was no problem, no trouble, no fracas, nothing. They came and they killed. And the uh, uh, police uh, uh, commissioner said, uh, and they called for enforcement. But when people of Nimbo was calling for enforcement, there was nobody. These are historical facts, which I would advise every Efulefu to go and study, including BBC, go and study it. BBC, I want you to go and investigate, ask the zoo, army and police and DSS, why did you not respond to Nimbo distress call when people were being massacred in Nimbo? I want zoo journalists to go and ask. Go and investigate. I want every Fulefu to go and ask. Now you can understand why we do what we do. But people we are gathered somewhere and they were praying and clapping and he came and he shot them. But when the same people were under attack by your own people, terrorists, full and terrorists, you did nothing. You did absolutely nothing. Now what does that tell you about the zoo? Let us continue. He is saying, we want to water down Amotekun. We want to bring it down village by village so it will no longer be a Yoruba-wide security outfit. And after that, they will pick you. Once you're village by village, they have the money, they control the armory, the Britain is on their side, they will pick you off one after the other. One after the other. One after the other. Don't you know that? That's what they want to do. And uh, of course, the... the the Oduduwa people, they are sensible enough not to cave into this rubbish. They cannot cave into this nonsense. Do you see the way they operate? Because they want to, they are in a hurry to take over everywhere. And nothing will happen. 
nothing will happen. That is why we must remain resolute. That is why we must remain vigilant. That is why we must all pursue Biafra until Biafra comes. We are not stepping back. None was saved. He further, he further stated that policing structure will be the same across the 36 states and whatever does not conform with the national structure will not be in the scheme of things. In other words, everything has to be as the Fulani wants it. If not as the Fulani wants it, it is rubbish, it's not going to work. Look at them. Do you see the way they are? They want to take you over. They did the same thing to house that people. Today, there is nothing called Hausa Flanny. Forget that garbage. The only thing they have is Hausa language. Hausa people no longer exist. They don't exist. Uh, oh, come here. Uh, come. Uh, okay, come, come. You get promotion. Uh, oh, God, Haruna is calling you. Uh, uh, Haruna will tell him, hey, okay, my boy, come here. Uh, you, you see those people, they want to divide Nigeria or IPOB. Those people, oh, oh God, me, my hand no follow. I know one of them. They send you, you come, you will die. That's for information. I'm telling you the truth. Yeah, they, you will come as the fool you are. You will die there. Fools everywhere. They want, you know the constitution of the committee will be defined by including all council chairmen, traditional rulers and religious leaders. And that's what they want to do. Religious leaders. So they'll bring imams to be part of Amoteku. They'll bring uh, 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 Fulani people to be part of Amoteku. they water it down. And as, as they are killing you, you will call your vigilance, you will call Amoteku, they will, you will not hear anybody. That's what they want to do. You want people to subject their security uh, um, um, apparatus to the same structure that you have. So that when Fulanese are killing people somewhere, nobody will respond. That's what they want to do. So you don't know that? Unbelievable. We are live and we are direct. The time now is 27 minutes past 8 p.m. in the blessed land of Biafra. We are bringing you the news that uh, some people are running away from and they can never, ever bring. They want to determine the fate of Amoteku. That's what they want to do. They want to control everybody. What they did to Hausa people, they want to do to all of you. If you're foolish, you allow it. If you all rise up with IPOB, we stand against this, these vandals and they will disappear overnight. When I said to, I was preaching this gospel before, and I'm very, very happy today that the news has gone viral, it is everywhere. And I want to thank everybody who brought out this very news, everybody who's, who has ever commented positively about this. It is a very simple headline, which of course, Tinubu being who he is, they have paid the tribune and they have now removed this very... Um, um, sorry, it's this day. You know, this day. This day has a way of of um, of um, publishing scoops. You know, these very hard to come by news. It was this day that also published what Buhari, the late Buhari, said about an attack against the north. It's a, it's an attack against Boko Haram is an attack against the north. They paid them money. They went and removed it. That's what they do. It's a business. This day newspaper is run like a business. If they run a scoop, if they run a sensational news that is true. After a while, you pay them money, they quietly go online, they pay Google, it's their property, they withdraw everything. If you go now online, you, you can no longer find this news. This was what I was telling all of you a while back. About um, <laughs> Tinubu, you don't know him, but I do. Tinubu, before he came back from exile, he was about uh, restructuring. He wanted regionalization, he wanted confederacy, he wanted Aburi, he wanted all these things. He, he rejected, in fact, the 1999 Abdul Salami constitution. That is a fact. I want to let the world understand that an average black politician in Africa has no soul. They have no conscience. They have no morals. The only thing that drives them is money and power of office. To be called excellency, that's all that, 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 that matters to them. Now, listen. I have said it before that nobody believes in one Nigeria. Nobody does. Nobody in their right mind, nobody who is sane will ever believe in one Nigeria. It is impossible. And some of you said, no, it's, it's one Nigeria. It's what we're... I want to tell you something today. Some of you have seen this. It has gone viral everywhere. And please, can somebody put it on my page, please? I beg of you so that those who are on Facebook can at least see it. And those who are listening via the app, Afterwards, they can also come and join and see it as well. I want you to put it there, and I want to read the headline for you. You have seen it before. The headline reads, 
I don't believe in one Nigeria Tinubu. He doesn't believe in Nobody believes in it. They only want one Nigeria because of oil and gas in Biafra land. They want one Nigeria because uh, they can hide under one Nigeria to loot, to steal, to pillage. Once you have the right planet connections, nothing will happen to you. That's uh, what they've been doing. That is why there is no electricity, no good roads, no good hospitals. That is why your schools have failed. That is why everywhere during the rainy season turns into a floodplain. That is why people are suffering, very hungry. That is why they give you Big Brother to distract you, because they know the people are very foolish. Tinubu doesn't believe in one Nigeria. These are the people that say, go and kill IPOB, kill them, it's one Nigeria, our country, our nation, because they are hypocrites. Inside them, they don't believe in it. He's not alone. Even the Janja, Janja weed politicians they don't believe in one Nigeria. Even the Fulefu politicians we have in Biafra land, they don't believe in it either. Nobody believes in one Nigeria. All they want to do is to make money. Wield power and influence. And that's all. The news is here. If you don't believe in Nigeria, uh, then what are you doing? Have you seen it here now? Has everyone now seen it? Please publish it on my page. Publish it, please, that the world may see. Those telling you about one Nigeria. He does not believe in one Nigeria. He does not believe in it. What does that tell you about, about, about them? What does this tell you about those who are shouting, those who are following, Sabon uh, TK, uh, those who are, can you see them? BBC, that is the saboteur headquarters. BBC, can you go and see Tinubu and interview him about what he said? He doesn't believe in one Nigeria. Nobody with nobody will in their right senses will ever believe in one Nigeria. Luga did not believe in it. Flora Shaw did not believe in it. Nobody believed in it. Even Britain that created the zoo, they don't believe in it. Nobody does. You have to be a fool to believe in one Nigeria. He's here now. Can you can you can you can, can you see it here? Can you see it? It's very, very clear. Can you see it? I don't believe in one Nigeria. Tinubu, very clear. It is a Yoruba news. Uh, sorry, this day, of course, is Yoruba. It's here. Interview he gave in 1997. Very clear. Do you see it now? That we are always right, we are always correct. Nobody can salvage the zoo. One Nigeria is gone. Even people who want to run for presidency, they, 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 they are saying that they don't believe in it. The only reason why they now believe in one Nigeria is because they are making money for themselves and their families. But yet, as a black person, you can never reason things through. You can never reason things through. That is the thing about the brain of black African people, and that is why Africa is backwards. That is why Africans are suffering. That is why they are killing us all over the place, because we don't sit down to reason things through properly. That is why the Fulanese are there doing what they are doing. That is why people are campaigning and saying black lives matter. Because we never reason properly. We never do. We never do. Very, very sad indeed. Nobody, I have said it, you have to be a complete idiot or a hypocrite to believe in one Nigeria. There is nobody, nobody with common sense in their skull that believes in one Nigeria. No human being at all. No human being whatsoever. Nobody does. That tells you all you need to know about the damnable zoological republic. That tells you all you need to know. And our people, we need to be wise. We need to know when we are being used. The Fulani using you today, be you a permanent secretary, be you somebody in the police, in the army, or in DSS, they are using you. You are nothing to them. Use your common sense. If you are something to them, they will not be doing what they are doing in the middle belt. Middle belt fought the war, not them, not Fulani. Middle belt fought the war. But look at what they are doing to them today. You people should develop some brain. Acquire some reasoning. Even in exile, he has remained one of the most consistent pro-democracy. He was an exile. Oh. He was an exile. Oh. That they, could, they didn't go to his house to kill him, but he ran away in exile. He was in exile. Today, he's a Jagaban, uh, the future president of the zoo. He was in exile. Efulef, <laughs> Tinubu was in exile. Oh. <laughs> Baby Sabo, maybe your, your, your lactogen has run out. Oh, look at him. 
He was in exile. He was the most, they say, one of the most consistent pro democracy activists, despite two treason charges still hanging on his neck. But in 2023, they will rig him in. Are you following? People who don't know history, zoo, as Nono Kafa is calling them, zoo, 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 zoo animals. Can you reason now? Nobody believes in your one Nigeria. Nobody does. Nobody in their right senses would ever believe in one Nigeria. Tirubu doesn't believe in one Nigeria. Britain doesn't believe in one Nigeria. Everybody wants one Nigeria because of what they can get from it. Not because they love the place. Nobody in their right senses can love the place anywhere. Nobody can. Now you understand it? Now you understand it? Now are you following? Do you see why they don't want us to broadcast? You see why they do everything they can to stop us from reaching, the, from telling the world the truth, from educating our people. Because we need education, we need enlightenment, we need reasoning to be able to survive, or else we'll be overrun by the Janjaweed. These are the things that some of you need to understand and learn very quickly. Why do you think they will come to IPOB meeting and start firing at people, innocent people? Why? Have you ever asked yourself why? They want to intimidate. They want to put fear in you. So that when Miet Yala comes with their terrorist groups and killing and naming you, do nothing. A girl was raped to death in the same Enugu state. Did the DSS react? A girl was raped to death in Enugu state. Did DSS react? I'm asking you. Did they react? No. Did police react? No. A girl was raped by Fulani to death. Any arrest? No. But where the brothers of those of the girl that you raped to death was sitting down, praying and clapping, you came down and you shot them dead. And people are telling me that that, that, that that can ever be justified. Maybe some of these flavors, they live on, they live on social media. They, they're not in Biafra and nobody can see them. You can't see them. You cannot see them. We will then set example with one of them. Then you will know. When their own sister was being raped to death, there was no DSS around, no police around, no army, nobody was, no foreigner was shot dead, none. And the relatives of that girl that foreigner is raped to death at Hamufu, when they were now gathered to pray, you came and you shot them dead. And Britain has said nothing. Nothing. And Britain, you, people will be wondering, why do you mention Britain all the time? Because they created the zoo. It was Britain that created the nonsense, the zoological republic. Britain created the zoo. And you cannot do anything anywhere in the world without British consent when it comes to Nigeria. Thank you very much, Jesse J, showing us pictures of, of different shades of animals. You have to choose who you are in the zoo. Do you see why Nigeria is a zoo? Somebody came out and said, I imagine somebody like maybe, um, what's his name, uh, Joe Biden. Imagine that American media today uh, were to dig up a, a statement that he made even 30 years ago saying, I don't believe in America. I believe that America should be torn to pieces. Do you think Americans will vote for him? Do you see the difference between white people and black people? Do you see how they reason? Do you see why sometimes I ask God, why did you bring me to Africa? I don't understand why. You could have made me a tree. At least I'll be useful as it's in the table. They will cut me down and use me. Or maybe as firewood, I'll provide some warmth. Do you see how foolish black people are? I'm asking you, can you imagine Trump 30, 20 years ago saying, I don't believe in America? And then the voting, man, do you think that's possible? Seriously, do you think so? Do you think so? But because Nigeria, Nigeria is the worst country, is the, is the place where you have the most foolish people in the whole world, the, the most useless, they are there. That is why somebody will come and say, I don't believe in Nigeria, but he wants to be Nigerian president. <laughs> Zoological Republic. Zoo. Animals everywhere. They cannot reason. When you see white people killing black people, shooting them in the back in America, it's because they, they, they have waited for us to be reasonable and we've refused. Why do you think planets are killing us? Because they have waited for 50 years and they have seen that 
every political generation is a fulefu after a fulefu the more they come the worse they become to the extent whereby the supreme court is now giving us a fulani court is now giving us a governor in Imo state who is an s yahoo yahoo boy a, a known criminal in lagos governor of the state in the sacred land of biafra then uh, imagine what will come after him <laughs> imagine they told us that we give you who should we decide who your governor should be we full and a janja weed we decide if you do any nonsense we go to supreme court we use a replane tunnel and ev turn everything around please publish that picture of tanko let them see who they are supreme justice uh, uh, chief justice is of the federation these are tuaregs these are people that have planned to take your take your land over but because you're black and foolish it cannot enter your skull you can register can register and i want everywhere we have our people to be at alert anytime you see them at night Creeping and going to arrest anybody, destroy them that place. Destroy them that same place. Destroy them completely. We are everywhere. We are everywhere. Destroy them and their vehicles. Anywhere you see them going in the middle of the night looking for good to arrest, destroy them. Use. I'm not going to tell you what to do. Block the road and destroy them. That's what they do. They want to strike fear into you. The same thing they are doing now, they did to Fulani, they, they, they did to Hausa, they succeeded. Today, they only have how Fulani emirs in Hausa land, only Fulani governors in Hausa land. They did the same thing to everybody in the Middle Belt, they succeeded. They went to Yoruba land, they, they, they beat a chunk out of them, which is quite a state. They, they want to try the same thing in Biafra land. It will not work. It can never work. Not whilst IPOB is there. It can never work. You're wasting it, and they know they're wasting their time anyway. Anyway, when uh, the hunting season is, is around, if Lefu is there in very serious trouble, nobody in their right mind believes in one Nigeria. Nobody. I want people to paste this Tinubu thing everywhere so you will know that nobody believes in one Nigeria. Nobody does. They full and they want Nigeria because they want to conquer everywhere. Take our oil and gas and make Nigeria the home of foreigners in the Sahel. That's the only reason why they want it. Those of them, I'm very, very happy now that the Ududuwas are now rising up and saying no to the, all that rubbish. Where is Middle Belt? When are you going to rise up? When are you going to rise up? How many are we? Biafra, Ududuwa, Middle Belt. How? Oh my goodness. People can't reason very well, honestly. Somebody wrote, and uh, people must, um, as I said, uh, uh, Simon Ekba is doing a very wonderful job. Absolutely wonderful. And needs the support of our people. Absolutely wonderful. He must be supported. Simon Ekba is doing a very wonderful job. Must be supported. Please. And also, my good general is doing a very wonderful job. Wonderful, wonderful job. Wonderful job. And the rest of the people who are, who are Ikenga from South Africa, all of you who are uh, Biafra child, all of you who are coming out and broadcasting, you're doing a very one. People must support them. And they will unite. People must support all this. They are doing very, very well. You must support them. You must support them. Facebook can suppress my post and suppress my page. They cannot, of course, they have suppressed all these other people as well. I know from my goons, they have suppressed him. Even Ekba, sometimes they leave him, sometimes they suppress him. You must support them. You must. <laughs> Anybody that speaks the truth, you must go and, and, and support them. Very, very important. They reason very well. Very, very important, please. And I'll read from what my guru wrote today. He said, none of them believe in one Nigeria. It's just their survival meal ticket. Take a look at all those who have had the opportunity of making the zoo Nigeria a better country, but have further destroyed it. Then you'll understand that one Nigeria is for criminals. One Nigeria is for only criminal. Only a criminal can come out and say, go and look at, okay, look at anybody who believes in one Nigeria. Go and look at the person. Look at them twice. Look at them twice. And then you will know. Look at them twice, you will know. Have you ever wondered why they have not been able to stop us? Have you ever wondered why, despite all the things, despite all how many new feeding bottles they buy for their baby sabotage, have you ever wondered why they can never succeed? 
Do you know why they cannot succeed? Because they don't exist. They do not exist. They have nothing to offer, nothing to contribute, absolutely nothing. Envy and jealousy is not, is not tantamount to, to strategy. It is never a strategy. Not now, not tomorrow, not ever. That is why they cannot even see. They cannot. I don't want to go too further. Anyway, but I like what those young men, young men are doing and you must support them. Very, very important. And women as well, please. You must support all of them. All of them that come on live to preach this very gospel in truth and in every honesty. Verifiable truth. Verifiable truth. You must support them. And why must it? Because of this. We are doing what we are doing because of this. Gunmen kidnap seven students and one female teacher in Kaduna. Is it very clear to all of you now? Do you see their game plan? Now, gun, have you heard DSS saying, gunmen are in Kaduna, we are going there. DSS, army, police, come, let's go. No. Do you know why they will not go? Because those doing the kidnapping are full of people. And what does that tell you about these people? What does that tell you about them? I, every day is bad news. Yet you don't want to understand. Some of you don't want to understand. Do you see how foolish our, our, our brain has become? Gunmen kidnap seven students. This is from Vanguard newspaper. One female teacher in Kaduna. Gunmen have kidnapped seven students along with their female teacher from a secondary school in Kaduna State. They have killed a vigilante and vandalized the church. This is the local vigilante that uh, the IG of police is planning for Yoruba and Damoteko. So they can come with their, as I told you earlier, they can come with their gunmen and kill people and uh, kill vigilante because you're not organized. Fulani will only strike you if you're not organized. They are afraid of organization. That is why they want to go and tear Amoteku apart. It's their strategy. It's their strategy. The attackers, they came in 20 motorcycles. If they don't have money, how can they come? If you claim that, <clears throat> they're from Mali, from Timbuktu. How, who gave them motorcycles when they came into a zoo? Who gave them motorcycles? Our people must be able to reason. Sometimes I know that a black mind or a black man or woman is self-destructive. Their ignorance self-destroys self them. The ignorance of a black man is what destroys a black man. I know that most black people are very, very foolish. But can't you ask yourself simple questions? Who gave these people guns and motorcycles? Who gave it to them? The, these were given to them by Fulani governors to cause mayhem, to bring death and destruction, to terrorize people. The entire apparatus of state, of governance of state in the zoo has been designed to deliver terrorism. When Buhari was elected, the dead one was elected, their mission was very simple, to conquer everybody. They went to Chibika Mechi. Chibika Mechi used the money of Biafran's river state to bankroll a Janjaweed. Nobody from the north gave him money. They went to Tinubu. Tinubu marshaled out all the media might of the Yoruba nation to get him elected. Not knowing that they were digging their own graves. Not knowing that when, when Tinubu was doing all this, he never knew that Pafa Soranti will, that the daughter will pay with her life. None of them knew that the Flanes will come, destroy Yoruba farms, destroy, rape, kill, then, when Tinubu was uh, promoting uh, the late dead Buhari, who is now in Saudi Arabia in a grave, they never knew. When Amechi was busy using our money to go and bankroll a, a criminal of PTF, they think we have forgotten PTF. 20 suitcases stuffed with money, they think we have forgotten. Halliburton scandal, they think we have forgotten. When all these things were happening, they thought they were doing themselves some good. All these idiots in the APC claiming uh, uh, in the name of Buhari this, Buhari that. Have you seen where you are today? All of you in APC in Biafra land, have you gone to the nearest bush where you are to see Fulani settlement? 
That's what you brought to your people. I call it the politics of Azikiwe. Pennywise, pound foolish politics. Because of political power, you betray the land where you come from. You betray your people. You give your land to Fulani and they will cut off your head for it. People are being kidnapped now in, in, in Kaduna. The same Kaduna people that fought the war, that came down as the officer class during the war. They are now in Birom territory, destroying them. The same Birom that gave soldiers during the war. They told you the same thing they are doing now. Oh, you are there and IPOB is there. The same garbage they said about Biafra during the war. Biafra is your problem. Not knowing, had some of you been able to reason then, as uh, showing did, you would know that Biafra was the solution to your problem. So Biafra was. The same way today that IPOB is the solution. IPOB is the solution. This, oh, look at IPOB. They are doing this. They are proscribed. The proscribed IPOB. A journalist from the South is writing. Proscribed IPOB. But one day, he will lose his wife, his daughter, or his sister to this rapist. And then he will realize he will change. People don't learn from the South. I have no idea why that is the case. People don't learn. They don't learn at all. Gunmen in Kaduna. Raping, killing, stealing, and abducting. But you are in Enugu shooting unarmed people. Talk about getting your priorities wrong. You are in Enugu killing people who are unarmed. Meanwhile, in Kaduna, there are, you don't have troops and policemen to go to Kaduna to police and to, 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 to provide security. But you are in Enugu killing people. I, have you seen such nonsense before in your life? Have you seen such rubbish before in your life? And none of them believes in one Nigeria. Even if you go to DSS and ask them, they don't believe in one Nigeria. They don't. Oh, it's because of my salary now. I need to take, I need to, need to take care of my family. The way that every black man reasons. Had white people reason this way, today we won't have computers, we won't have mobile phones, nothing. That is why white people are always ahead of black people. Because we don't reason very well. Tell me why anybody will come out and be defending something he doesn't believe in. How is that possible? How is that possible? It's happening in Kaduna. They are kidnapping, they are killing. They, they, they want to reduce the motor. They are the kill the vigilante. That's what they want to do. Reduce the vigilante to nothing. Make it local. Local priest, local imam, local traditional ruler. Those they can bribe easily and compromise all of you. But a motor with one central structure. Nobody can compromise it. But if you any day you allow yourselves to buy into this garbage of um, saying local one, local council, local meeting, you are finished. When Fulani came, they first took Gobert from the houses. They didn't go for everywhere at the same time. They first of all, they took Gobert from them. They named this Sokoto. Then they moved to other places. Moved to Katsina. Took everywhere from them. Installed their Emirates. And uh, it's over for them. It's over for Hausa now. Hausa doesn't exist. Does Hausa exist? That's why they don't want me to broadcast. They say, oh no, don't. Every time he, he's on the air. Because they know we are hitting them hard. Ordinary microphone. And you're running. Imagine when I come down, what will happen to you? And you know I'm coming, don't you? Of course you know that. Who doesn't know? Only a fool doesn't know that. In a country where corruption is... Uh, people talk about corruption. It's, a, what, uh, it's no longer news. <laughs> Senate directs the Attorney General, who himself is under probo, to probe 18 billion. 18 billion dollars stolen in broad daylight. 18 billion dollars. They, they are the people that believe in one. If you can steal this amount of money, why won't you believe in one Nigeria? The, the, the few white diplomats that believe in one Nigeria are those who are making money from it. Because it is a very corrupt place. Anybody can make money, as Trump said a while back. That his friends are making money for, uh, over there. Why would you want Nigeria to break? As a white man, as a diplomat who is making money, you come down as, a, as an ambassador, you are going back as a millionaire. Why, why would you want Nigeria to break? Why? Only, only if you're a fool. People that want Nigeria to be one are those who are benefiting. They're like the Tinubus of this world. They want to eat the money meant for poor people. 
and then they turn around and give you 4 million to fight COVID-19, 4 million. They steal 18 billion, they give you 4 billion to fight it. That is why you're a black person who cannot reason. And that is why your outlook in life is black, very bleak. Very sad indeed. That is why we have come to educate you, to enlighten you so that you may change from your evil ways. And talking about changing from evil ways, that is when a fool, a fool, he's in Lagos, he thinks that, uh, because he's Osu, he thinks that uh, Osu is a bad thing in our place. Of course it's not. It is not. Because uh, he went to the village and they called him Osu. He ran to Lagos and embraced everything called one Nigeria. But as somebody said, when his backside was still intact, he, he has not forgotten his boxer shorts somewhere in the north. Okay, he boxer shorts and I, now he, he wears none. He, he, when his brain was intact, he made a statement. He said, we can go to war again. <laughs> Who will go to war again? Joey Bokwe, engineer, author. One that the Igbos will pick up guns again and fight for Biafra. This is the monkey castigating Ivy Obi. <laughs> ah, dear. Inconsistency. As I told the Fulefus in those days, when they joined me in IPAB, I said to them, a black man has a problem. They said, what is it? I said, ideological inconsistency. They are inconsistent. When you give a black man a small chicken change, he will abandon his principles. He will abandon everything he ever believed in because of money. He will buy a flashy car. He will buy a fancy house. And I ask all of you, how many black megastars do you know around the world who made money, who still is in money today? Very, very few of them. They always squander it. <laughs> they always squander it. That is the way they are. Even those working for Facebook now, the money that they give to them, they'll squander it. They look at all the politicians. Tell me any politician that uh, came out only full and uh, that, uh, that kept stealing, that made it out of the money they stole in office. Go and check all of them now. Are they not poor? Or oh, they are their hotels doing very well? Did they build any factories? They only built hotels. Are they doing well? Go and look at all of them. There is one cockroach, one inconsequential buffoon. I'm, I'm, I do apologize for actually mentioning the idiot's name on a program which I'm anchoring. His name is Joey Bukwe. He's based in Lagos. He's an Osu from Newi. He was chased away from the village. He thought the village came to, uh, they came for him to sacrifice him. He forgot that we, I abolished Osu long time ago. I don't believe in it. I don't believe in it. If people can go out and marry whoever they like, you, all people are born and created equal before God. I don't believe in all that rubbish. Usu nonsense. I don't believe in it. This one is Ibokwe. He ran away from the village because he's Usu. He went to Lagos and they gave him some chicken change and he changed. <laughs> they give you chicken change and you change. And now he's pursuing change in APC as the gutter drainage uh, commissioner for, for, for Lagos. He claims he has a, a PhD. <laughs> He's in charge of gutter, drainage, in Ajegun, in Lagos. He's an, he has a, he's an intellectual <laughs> in charge of drainage. This idiot a few years ago said he will pick up guns again. He was, in fact, in spirit, an IPOB member. But they gave him money as they did to other Fulefus and started talking rubbish. Unless you're clean and pure, you can never last here. You can never. Because we are whiter than white and whiter than snow. I can hear your child, we are clean, scrupulously clean, without blemish. That is why the enemy is afraid of us. If you don't know, let me tell you. Unbribable, unbuyable, uncompromisable, we don't compromise. Never, ever, ever. That's why we appear harsh and, and, and very hard to some people. Because they want to bring the zoo blood, the zoo contaminated, useless black brain into what we are doing. Once you exhibit that black stupidity, you, you are shown the door immediately. We can go to war again. <laughs> Please, uh, people should send it to the idiot, the moron. And tell him that the problem of a black man is ideological inconsistency. 
inconsistency. You don't believe in the same thing for long. You change, you chop, and you change. We will go to war again. Uh, if there is uh, injustice, if this injustice, then what is IPOB fighting for? IPOB is fighting for some things that you mentioned. BBC will interview. I want BBC will to go and interview him again. <laughs> Sabo Network for Sabo, connecting all Sabo to us. <laughs> That's their job. Umokoko, a criminal politician, or somebody said, Chimes, yeah. residing in Lagos, uh, uh, clearing gutter every day. They give him some chicken change. He comes and talks rubbish. And we're here, and the same thing the houses did, and fallen is over random. They think we are as stupid as they are. Of course, we are not. He's there for the whole world to see. <laughs> These are the so called uh, 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 Lagos based uh, intellectual of Afuanko. Umuokoko. Umuokoko. These are the so called intellectual one. The idiot like this. You knew that Biafra is the key. He knew that Biafra was important. But they gave him some change, chicken change, and he changed overnight. Typical, very typical. Senate to Senate calls for sack of NTA Star Times management over 200 billion stolen. Before it was 18 billion dollars, so this one now is 200 billion naira stolen. Lai Mohammed, one Nigeria. They believe in one Nigeria because of the money they can steal. Only an idiot believes in one Nigeria. Only a criminal does. That is common sense. Lai Mohammed's ministry, 200 billion stolen. Every day they do probe. You know, they do probe and they go behind. They share the money they have stolen and the probe dies down. Monkeys uh, probing other monkeys for stealing banana. Is that possible? Can you see monkeys now gathering and probing other monkeys for stealing banana? When all of them love banana? <laughs> it's not possible. Of course it's not. They have stolen the money. They have stolen the money. 19 billion, 11 billion, 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 billion. They, this is our nation. Is this our country? Our nation. Our forefathers gave to us in 1960. You are older than Nigeria. Oh. The person talking about his forefather giving him Nigeria is older than Nigeria. Nigeria is form, was formed in 1960. The idiot talking about his forefathers giving him Nigeria is, is nearly 70 years old. I don't know how people, I don't, I, I, I can't understand how people reason. In this Yoji, black, but I don't know how, I have no idea. Your forefathers gave you Nigeria. You are older than Nigeria, and your forefathers gave them, gave Nigeria to you. Fought, and your, your forefathers. I have no idea what is wrong with black people. I have no clue. Only God can save them. Their stupidity is astonishing. And that's what we're supposed, you know, those complaining about my broadcast is because you, you know, you know, when I touch them, their friends are listening. You know, their friends listen. So when they go out, they want to pose. Their friends will call them, hey, come, monkey from zoo, come. And they get upset. Instead of them to get upset at their own stupidity, they get upset at the Kano and the IPOB. <laughs> That's what's happening. We are listened to in over 154 countries. 154. Unprecedented. Not even BBC can manage that. Do you doubt me in, in the year 2013 and 2014? Was Radio Biafra not more popular than BBC? When they, they on, on tuning, uh, on, they rate radio stations by popularity. Radio Biafra was number one, am I lying? People, people went then to go and screenshot it. Number one radio station in the whole world. This Radio Biafra. That I was angry. Don't you know that? That the world doesn't... They get, when you see people get upset, oh, now the candidate said POP, they are this, they are... It's because their friends listened to Radio Biafra. They went to go and be, be posing, be, uh, trying to play basketball, eh? and the volleyball. Their friends say, hey, come, come, monkey, go and get it. They ask, why are you calling me monkey? Because you're from a zoo. Then they get upset. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. Umuokoko, we are special. We are IPOB. That makes us a special breed. We are too special for the animals that inhabit the zoological republic. Umuokoko, everywhere. Everywhere. And that is why we are suffering abroad. And that's why we need Biafra. That same man has spoken again, Abariba, a man of steel. 
a man of unknown immense integrity, when your people's livelihood and their lives are threatened, that is how you know leadership. Let me see the idiot that come out. Uh, I, I want to run for president. Yeah, where I will ask you, when our people were being killed in Enugu, where, where, where are you? What did you say? Simple question. Then they go to Hanese. They open it. They say, it's our turn. They must, this people, they must talk. It's our turn now. If you are this wicked when you're not the president, imagine what, how wicked you will become when you become the president. The closure of the shops of belonging to Biafrans, we are hardworking people. This is a message I want to send to the Ghanaian government this very evening, because I know they're listening. I have a lot of respect for Ghana and what they have been able to accomplish. But Biafrans are in Ghana not as illegal immigrants, but as hard-working businessmen. They own businesses all over the place. And I must also refer the good people of Ghana and their government to the protocols of ECOWAS on free movement, integration, and security. These are contained in the documents and in the articles signed by the state of Ghana to allow people to reside and to trade across West Africa the same way they did with the EU. Because ECOWAS was modeled along the lines of the EU because the EU was the economic community, EEC was European Economic Community. They formed ECOWAS, Economic Community of West African States. You know, we have to copy all the time because the EU, they were creators, you know. <laughs> they created all the states in Africa. That's the truth. And we copied them. And because we copied them, we copied everything in the EU verbatim. That is why in ECOWAS, anybody can reside anywhere and do a legitimate business. They cannot be subject to deportation. It is impossible. Unless they have, of course, breached the rules of the land. That is what the protocol says here. ECOWAS protocol. We don't want to go to court in Ghana to be able to prove that to the government of Ghana that we are allowed to do business in Ghana. We are a blessed people. We know we are like the Jews. We are being persecuted all over the place. It's in our nature because we are blessed. We are doing business in Ghana, in Kumasi. What is happening in Kumasi is not good. And I'm telling the authorities that to leave our people alone. We are doing legitimate business in Ghana. We are contributing to Ghana's overall GDP. And we are paying taxes in Ghana. And this cannot continue. And it shouldn't continue. And we are not Nigerians, please. We are Biafrans. We are not Nigerians, please. We are Biafran people. We are not the terrorists you read about. The terrorists are the Fulanese, please. They are Fulani people, not Biafrans. We beg of you to allow our people to be. I will be speaking to them in the coming days, making sure that the authorities in Ghana understand our plight and leave our people alone. Abaribe have also spoken about it. That is how you know men. And some idiots will come out and say they want to become president. Mad people everywhere. I'm upset with all of them. They, could, they couldn't say a word. They couldn't say a word. Strong condemnation. They couldn't say it. Is to come out and, and say they want to be president. There are a few announcements I have to make this evening, and we must pay very close attention, please. It pertains to this glorious global family of IPOB. Immense. We are huge, we are big, I understand that. And with that also comes some, some teething problems, which we are also very, very good at dealing with. And I must make this announcement this evening. Please, if you are placed as a national coordinator or you have replaced an existing national coordinator, please do not, I repeat, do not dissolve the cabinet. You inherit that very cabinet. Non-performers you can remove over time. Performers you encourage, you promote. That is how it's done. Very, very important place. And on that note, I want to reiterate that the appointment of every officer within IPOB is down to me. I appoint and I dismiss. And I have a good reason for that. I appoint and I dismiss. Please. I am making it very, very clear. You don't dismiss anybody or appoint anybody without going through DOS. Absolutely important. That is why the South Africa Finance um, Officer, Mrs. Gloria Alea, she's from Zimbabwe, 
but married to a Biafran. So that makes her a Biafran. She will remain in her position as our finance officer in South Africa. It is not debatable. She stays there. And so does the old cabinet. They stay there. The only thing that we have changed is the coordinator and the deputy coordinator in South Africa. Everybody else stays in place. You work with them for some time. You see those who are performing and those who are not performing, and you deal with it accordingly. The issue, every issue regarding finance is dealt with is dealt with by our sister Nenayanya. And when it comes to West Africa by Amarachi Ibe, no coordinator is allowed to remove or replace a finance officer. It's a no no. You are not allowed to do that. But you can recommend a replacement by first stating your reason and making such known to our sister Nenayanya, who is our overall finance officer. And also from tonight, from tonight, from this very second senior officers and coordinators are banned you are banned from making generalized audio messages and putting them on whatsapp for circulation no more if you want to reach anybody or you have any message to communicate you come on air and you say it if it is something that you cannot say on air you pick up the phone and you call the person responsible or you have a conference call and then speak to the people who are responsible no more all these stupid ordeals. I do not want it. And lastly, allow me to repeat. There is only one command in IPOB. We don't have groups in IPOB. There is none. We have IPOB and we have the volunteer command. That's all. Volunteer command of IPOB. No more groups of any sort. No more gathering of any sort. None whatsoever. There is none. It is either IPOB or it is IPOB, no name of any sort from anywhere. Our Brigade of Guards is the volunteer command, that's all. No other people from anywhere, no other name. And also, I wish to make a correction regarding the announcement I made about her because that they are IPOB, they are IPOB concerned citizens of Biafra in in Africa's that made the um, contribution to us. And we still remain very grateful for that. We remain very, very grateful for that, please. Absolutely grateful for that. Absolutely grateful for that. You must send that very note to Tinubu and to Joey Bokwe. Uh, we, we want to give him publicity. He, he loves publicity, so we'll give it to him tonight. And the Yorubas must not cave in to this Fulane Janjawood garbage. Nothing whatsoever. Nothing whatsoever. Absolutely important. Don't cave in to them. Once you do it, they will reduce you to the vigilante they have in southern Kaduna and they will proceed to massacre each and every one of you. Absolutely important. That the state police, Buhari, worried about misuse of firearms, presidency, channels TV, garbage and rubbish. For anybody, you have you have assault rifle. This is um, when they say Buhari, that means he's, uh, who is the mask wearer of presidency, mask wearing presidency. They are still not, have you, has anyone seen Usibajo yet? No, you have not seen him because he don't exist. Have you seen Buratai? You can't see him because he doesn't exist anymore. Idiots. That is, that is a country. When the white man look at you people, a place with no president, no vice, nothing, and you're still managing to trudge along, you will know that you people, you have no hope in life. People are useless. But be afraid there is hope. And I also believe in the Duduwa, there will be life and hope. And if middle belt can get their acts together, also there will be life over there. Or else, everybody is doomed to a period of darkness that the Fulani has brought with them. And on that very note this evening, we bring this program to a conclusion. To some people, Biafra is what they discuss. To others, it is something they dream about. To some others, it's something that they talk about. To others, something they gossip about. But to us, Biafra is much more than everything put together. Put together. Biafra is even more important than life itself. Biafra to us is a religion. And here on radio, Biafra is where we worship because Elohim Chukwokika Biama is our God. From me, 
from here with pain at the loss of our people in my heart and also abundance of love for what is to come in their memory. I say to all of you, good evening.